All right, I'm gonna be showing you how to integrate the Biper SDK into your Godot engine project. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is head over to the Biper dashboard, if you haven't done this already, and add a new game for your Godot project. You're gonna to wanna to put in the app title, app name, bundle identifier, description, genre, subgenre, app ID, and shared secret for both iOS and Google Play. You're going to want to add a new app for your project for both platforms. Uh, I've already done that, so I'm just going to go into my Android app here. And if you go down to your settings and scroll down, you're going to find these game keys. And those are the keys we're going to need to initialize the Biper SDK. Now, once we've done that, we can head over to the GitHub repository for the Godot SDK. And for now, we can just download the whole thing as a zip. We're gonna head over to where we downloaded that. Mine's just in my downloads folder and I'm gonna extract it. You're gonna wanna go into the extracted folder until you find the, the version folders and you're gonna wanna open the latest version. And now would be a good time to open your Godot projects folder. Open that up here. And if you don't have these folders already in your project root, we're going to create new folders called iOS, all lowercase, and do the same for Android. Now inside these folders, we're going to want to create another folder called plugins, all lowercase again, and do the same thing for iOS. And then inside our iOS plugins folder here, we can look at this, the latest version of the Bytebrew SDK and open this and just drag this Bytebrew folder right into there and then go to our Android folder, plugins, the latest version, and then these two files, we're just going to copy right into the plugins folder. And now that we've done that, uh, I already have my project open in Godot here. So I'm going to restart the editor. And now if we go into project export and we add Android, we should have our Bytebrew plugin available here and also on iOS right here. And we are going to want to do one extra step if you're building for iOS with the Bytebrew SDK. So if you go to project, Project settings, go to auto load, and then in path here, we're going to find the Bytebrew entry.gd script. So if you go into iOS, plugins, Bytebrew, and then Bytebrew entry.gd, hit open, and the node name is going to be Bytebrew entry with no spaces, just like this, and hit add. All right, now we can initialize Bytebrew. Uh, keep in mind, you're only ever going to want to initialize Bytebrew once, and you're going to want to do it in whatever your first scene is. This example project only has one scene, so I'm just going to do it in here. I'm going to open up my main GD script here, and we're going to declare a variable at the top to store our Bytebrew object. All right, now that we have that, we can come right down here into our ready function, and we're just going to check if engine dot has singleton byte brew we're gonna say byte brew equals engine dot get singleton byte brew And now that we've stored our Bytebrew singleton inside our variable here, uh, we can do a simple platform check. We can say if os.get name equals Android, and then we can say else if os.get name equals iOS. And then in here, we can just initialize Bytebrew by going bytebrew dot 
initialize byte brew. And then this is going to take a few parameters. Uh, the first two are going to be our game keys. So if we come down here again, uh, copy our game ID, go back in, paste it there. And then our second parameter is going to be our SDK key. Do the same thing. Third one is going to be our engine version. So we can just say Godot and then our app version. So let's say 0.1 for now. All right. Uh, now, if we wanted to initialize for iOS as well, we could just paste this down here and we would use our iOS keys instead. All right. So that should get you started and initialized.